Alright, so welcome back. And in this lesson, <coughs> we're going to go ahead here and start compositing behind Bender so that we can at least begin the process of creating our final image. So, as you can see, we're still inside of Photoshop here. And we just need to go ahead and start bringing in some source images to go ahead and actually composite behind them. So, as you can see, if you use the, the same layout as I have, where you just group everything, what we did in the last video, and <clears throat> it's going to make it a lot easier for us to, to actually go ahead and composite behind them. So let's just go ahead here and open up a um, source image for what it's going to be behind Bender here. And we'll start off with something um, that's pretty psychedelic. Um, trying to maintain the same cartoonish feel that we have in our our render and so far in our composite. And we just simply need to go ahead and actually just drag the, the image behind them. Um, as you can see, you obviously can't see it here, so we just need to go ahead here and scale this up. Okay. And we'll just go ahead and scale it out for what is going to be the size of the image. Just making sure that we at least do this a little bit larger so that we have some some freedom here. Um, and right away you can see we're adding an image like that. It actually gives us a lot of attitude. Um, and it changes the image a lot. So we just need to basically adjust the layer styles here. We're going to go ahead here and bring in another image. Um, and it's basically just going to be collaging a bunch of photos together here. Okay, so let's go ahead here and scale this up as well. Oops. Just making sure that we, you know, you can go a little bit larger. and Usually that's basically on the safe side simply because that way if you have an issue you can really cut a lot of that stuff off so just try and resize everything to be proper and usually just add a couple you know Gaussian blurs to everything and we'll go ahead and adjust our layer styles and you can always you know take and add any image that you actually want behind Bender. Um, I'll give you guys the PSD file as well. So I'm just looking here to see what's actually going to fit. I'm going to throw some 3D binary in here. Sort of like he's really tripping. And, and we really want to try to at least maintain that that cartoonish feel to it. Um, and that's where it's difficult because Bender is such an iconic character that you can't really change it too much. Okay, so let's just try with our layer style here. And that's good. Let's go ahead and grab our eraser tool and we'll simply just erase off some of this excess. Okay. And we'll go ahead here and duplicate this over and we will just go ahead here and flip this horizontally okay, delete that third one there, I thought that would actually work just trying to at least maintain a decent image here Okay, so we'll just combine these two layers simply by selecting them and then hitting Control E. And I'm just trying to adjust here what is going to be the, the 3D binary just so that we don't have any sort of excess overlay here. go ahead here and bring in another image
just trying to, you know, really find an image that's actually going to fit <coughs> a little bit better here. What is probably going to be our best fit. And I'll just go ahead here and resize this as well. So we'll go ahead here and just Gaussian blur the, the 3D binary a little bit. Um, not too much because we don't want to make it super blurry so that it becomes a distraction. go ahead here and blur the the main binary here turn on our psychedelic layer just drag that to the top of the stack to give us a little bit of color here and we'll just have to adjust the layer style a little bit and we'll turn on our last psychedelic layer here just adjusting some of our layers so that we can get a really weird effect and that's probably not going to work so let's just go ahead and delete that layer this layer actually works pretty good so we can just go ahead and adjust that a little bit there and just collage in another photo here just to see if we can get something that's going to work well here uh, maybe this one will work so let's just go ahead and drag this in you know and a lot of this compositing work just is basically you know trial and error and see if see what's going to work and see what's not actually going to work so we'll go ahead here and just put this over here And just put your layer style. right there it looks like he's really starting to, to jack on fairly well so let's go ahead and duplicate that 3D binary layer or layer 5 copy there and I'm going to go ahead here and go into our filter gallery and see if I can add some more interesting effects to it here If you have to, you know, run the gamut of going through all your your filters, that's fine. It's just trying to think out and, and figure out which is actually going to work the best um, whenever it comes to overlaying those images onto another layer. So let's go back up here to the top, and I'm thinking it's going to be that charcoal, maybe. No. Uh, the crosshatch is probably going to work a little bit better here okay um, or even the cutout will probably work fairly well um, we'll just have to really adjust our our layer intensity as you can see here if we go ahead and just adjust our layer style here sort of get double the effects there of our our binary and just blow um, blur it out a little bit here and I think 
we're we're pretty good there. Um, now we just need to go ahead and come in here. We'll go ahead and group these. Just select them all and just drag them onto the group. Okay, and we'll hide those. And now we can go ahead and um, begin the process of actually putting the the main specular layer, the main ambient occlusion and depth layer on Bender here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and open those. And we just need to go into Bender's images. And just using our um, pass layers that we render down here, we'll go ahead and just bring in our our depth pass. Control, um, select the, the alpha channel there. Go ahead and bring that over. Just making sure that we actually composite this on top of Bender. Okay. And we can go ahead and turn that to multiply. And you can see the the main difference here. So let's go ahead and open our uh, ambient occlusion pass as well. You can see here. We'll just go ahead and select the, the alpha channel of it. And we'll drag this over. And we'll go ahead and composite this down. And we'll just have to really adjust this. Usually, um, I will set that to multiply, but that probably isn't going to work in this case. Okay. Because this is way too dark, and even if I go ahead and adjust it, it's still just not going to give us the effect that I want. I mean, we can go ahead and leave that there. That's really no big deal. Um, but overall, I still think that that's a little too dark. So maybe come up here and we will go ahead and open another render pass. Being our, uh, <coughs> our diffuse pass here. And then just simply select the alpha channel. Again, drag it over. Just place it properly, and just play with your layer styles, and you can really do some very interesting stuff here. Okay, and we'll just change the filter down a little bit here, and maybe come in here and adjust the human saturation. go. Um, I think our composite's pretty good here. Um, I'll give you guys all the, the Photoshop files um, and the render passes as well since the scene files have already been uploaded and they're downloadable. Um, I definitely want to give a big thanks and shout out, shout out to uh, Ben Tate and to Chris Tate for allowing me to go ahead and bring this tutorial to you guys. Um, if you just continue to to work in Photoshop, you can you know really can come up with anything that um, your hearts basically desire. Um, you can really do so much work inside of Photoshop, and I've shown you you know how basic it, it is to really just get a render out out of Maya and then jump into Photoshop to to go ahead and composite on and behind your image. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed the tutorial. Um, Definitely check us out on Facebook at uh, Sean Keenan or at www.mzpstudios.com. Um, and thanks for watching.